Make a cast aluminum self-cocking crossbow pistol from scratch, part two. Hopefully you've already seen part one. If not, you should definitely watch that first. And I would also recommend watching the demo video of what this crossbow is before that. But anyway, this is part two for this instructional video. Here is what we had from the end of part one, and I also have out a piece of 3 16th, 3 16th inch mild steel rod. We're going to be using the rod to make pins for the mechanical parts here. All the things that have to pivot. Just a few things. We have to drill a hole, 3 16th inch hole or whatever size of dowel, metal dowel you're using. You don't have to use 3 16 but that's what I use. Drill a hole in the base of that thing for it to pivot, that latch, and also in the aluminum where it has to mount to. And we also have to... I'm trying to make it so you can see that, but I don't know if it's working. And we also have to drill the hole through the trigger for it to pivot. And there's a down by where the stock is going to mount, we also have to drill. I'm not going to show that, but I'll show you after. So line that cross up with the hole in the casting. And then just drill through. This will clean out the hole in the aluminum casting and make the hole in the trigger. And of course we have to drill through this latch also, which is kind of hard because it's steel, but it has to be done. Through there. And you can see down at the bottom of the handle I've done those holes too. This is a these are the 3 16 inch rods that I've cut. This long one is 29 inches. I'll give the dimensions for these, along with the picture that shows all the dimensions for everything else. But these shorter ones don't have to be any certain length, really. They just have to be a length that'll work. Like this one, you can see, it just needs to be going through, and it needs to have like maybe an inch or so of extra on each side. That's probably really excess. You could probably do a lot less than that and have it work but you'll see why it needs the excess. And then this pin just needs to be the same width as that, or at least similar to the same width. It's going to go through, and that's what's going to be the pivot for the, le the lever. And you'll want to glue that pin in place too, but as you can see, unfortunately, my hole was crooked, but whatever, I just bent it straight, made it work still going to be kind of crooked. It can wobble a little bit on mine, but it works fine. And the 29 inch long one goes through here, just make it centered right on there. And I've got this little piece of a spring that's going to go underneath the back of the latch that will make the latch so that it latches, so that it stays in place and works. And I'm just going to glue that in place. You might be able to see that I cut into the stock, into the top of that lever there, for the spring to just set into a notch. You can see this is working. I also cut in the back, you see where the hook is going on to, on the main part, the handle part. I cut a notch for the hook to latch into. Didn't think I really needed to show cutting that notch. But once that's working, you're going to bend the two halves of the long steel rod forward so that they're parallel with the whole thing. And this took a lot of force as you can see. But eventually you can get them straight. And now you just need to mark on those steel rods at the front where it comes right up to the front of the crossbow. Just behind where the bow would mount. And you're going to bend it 90 degrees straight up. You know, roughly 90 degrees. Straight up away from the top of the bow. Crossbow. This was a really easy way to bend it and make the nice sharp corners.
and you're also going to be bending it two more times so that it comes back down behind about where the bowstring should be when the bow is at rest. And this way, like, part of why it has to come back that far is just so that it can bring the string back to the notch all the way without bending the handle too far. But you can see those are tilted back. That's just so that when they grab the string, it tends to pull it down onto the crossbow. And I welded the base of those to the long part of the shaft, like where it bends back around, so that way it doesn't bend further. Of course, I had to put it in the welding shot because it looks cool. And you can see that will drag it right back to that notch where the string is supposed to knock into. Now all that's left to do is the bow. The entire rest of the mechanism is finished. So I'm going to make the main part of the bow out of 24 inches of 3 quarter inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. And I have to reinforce the center a 3 inch piece of 3 quarter inch dowel and a 3 inch piece of 1 inch schedule 40 pipe. And the dowel is wrapped with some masking tape just to make it a tight fit inside the 3 quarter inch tube. And I'm just going to use a smaller dowel to tell how far I'm pushing it in. Just push it in all the way so that it's centered and measure from both ends to make sure. And then I'm going to use this propane heater to heat up the 3 inch piece of 1 inch schedule 40 pipe and put it on. This is going also to the center to reinforce the center of the bow. Just squeeze it while it's cooling and this will help it stick onto there. It'll be kind of stuck even though there's no glue. Now we're going to heat up half of that 3 quarter inch pipe, half at a time, and it will become soft. I mean, hopefully you've done this before, or are aware that it can be done at least. And then just going to press it with a piece of wood. I clamped it and let it sit until it was cool, but you can just hold it until it solidifies if you want to, if you don't have a clamp. And you're trying to get it tapered so that it's thinner at the end. And I'm just going to cut the ends so that it makes a shape like that. Heat it up. I'm going to put some hot glue in there and then I'll press it together again so that it's thin out of the tip and it will be bent slightly forward. This is mainly just for looks and to help the string hold on better. Uh, this isn't going to really help the performance even though it looks like it's a recurve bow. So that's what we have so far. I also heated at the base of the limbs. I heated it back up and did some work with just by hand without any sort of mold or anything to get it so there was no crease. So once you have the tips smoothed out, file in some knocks like this for the string to hold onto. Just sand the bow. I'm hoping that you've made a PVC bow before if you're watching this, or you can just find a tutorial somewhere to make a PVC bio. This is because I'm going really quick through that. You have to cut that notch in there for the arrow to come through. That's why the center has to be so reinforced, because of the stuff we're doing to the center of it, cutting it like that. And I've also put some grooves around it for the string to mount onto, because we're going to be lashing this onto the crossbow with string. You can see how you, know, you need to have that groove there for the arrow to get out. I have painted the, cro the bow red. Obviously you can paint it whatever color or don't paint it, whatever you want. Then I have some mason line and I'm just going to basically wrap it around the string, or the, around the bow where those notches that I cut are, and this is going to hold it on there. Wrapping it around the bow, around the frame, around the bow, around the frame. And use quite a bit of string, cause, and get it tight. But don't put on so much that it's going to start getting in the way of the arrow that's trying to come off of the bow. see how I've wrapped the string on the bow and on the frame in two different directions. 
it's all just one continuous string. Is what I mean by that. I wrap it to around the bottom and around the side. Now all it needs is a bowstring, which this is a really crappy string. This is just a string. This is going to stretch so much, but for now this is the string it's going to get. Later I'll make some improvements to this crossbow and make a good string for it and fix that piece, that aluminum piece that broke off, which is the sight and arrow holder. But this is actually the first time that I'm cocking it and about to pull the trigger. I didn't do any tests before I recorded this. And this trigger is way harder to pull than I thought it was going to be. But it does work. And the string stretched so much on that, you can see. Just because of the type of string it is. But anyway, if you want to see it shooting, you can watch the demo video.